Hi guys, my name is Harmon Hart, and I'm going to give you all a series of small videos on um, ultralight type airplanes. Now, I started out looking for some information to get into flying, and I was really having a hard time getting information on the internet. Uh, there's a lot out there, but it's very disorganized, and even the manufacturers really don't have a uh, variety of information on their products. They have a few, a few still pictures, a couple of spec sheets, and that's all. And if you go to YouTube and you start looking around, and uh, there's lots of videos of people flying airplanes, but there's never any videos on someone explaining to you a little bit about them. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a little bit about this airplane. Um, this is what I would consider to be a uh, one step up from an ultralight. This is actually an experimental airplane. This is a Quicksilver GT400. And this particular model is a 1987 model. So it's over 20 years old. It's in real good condition. And I bought it about a year ago after I got my sport pilot license. And this particular airplane is a experimental. And so it is in numbered on the tail, as you can see. And it requires a pilot's license. It also requires an annual condition inspection, just like a regular general aviation airplane. Now, um, the thing I liked about the Quicksilver uh, GT400, what it, it was recommended to me by several um, individuals on the Internet, mainly Mark Smith from Tri-State Kites, who is generally considered one of the Quicksilver experts in the country, and from Beaver Bourne from AirTech in Louisiana, who is also a notable Quicksilver person. And um, they both said if they had a heavy guy like me who weighs 250 pounds, they would uh, put him in a GT400. And so I got the GT400, and I picked this one up used. You can buy these uh, GTs for anywhere used between $5,000 and $10,000. Uh, a really exceptional one might go for twelve or fifteen. dollars but new, they're almost $20,000. The good news is there's a lot of them on the market, and they're not really hard to find. But this, is, this would be great for someone who wants to get into flying inexpensively and try it out, see if they like it. Um, the, the thing about the GT400 that you're really going to like is that it has uh, all the conventional control surfaces of a regular airplane. It has an elevator and a rudder. It has ailerons. It also has flaps. And um, it's got a control yoke, much like a general aviation aircraft, like a Cessna. Um, even though the airplane that I, I got my license in had a stick, you can see that uh, this one's pretty easy. This operates the ailerons, and this operates the elevator. And then you've got a pretty decent uh, dash up here with your instrumentation. And so... It's got, uh, it's got quite a few features. This one also has a ballistic parachute and a 10-gallon fuel tank. And as you can see, I've got my little ICOM radio and my headset in here. And the ICOM radio is right over there on the side of the chair. So I can communicate on different uh, aircraft frequencies and, and announce myself and my intentions. Um, these little uh, ultralight-style aircrafts or light sports, quicksilvers, are usually powered by a Rotax two-stroke. Some of the more expensive ones have a Rotax four-stroke in them, but most of them are powered by a, a little Rotax two-stroke. And this is a Rotax 503 dual-carb, dual-ignition. So this motor produces a little over 50 horsepower, and as you can see from looking up here, it's got four spark plugs. And so if you lose part of your uh, coil on your stator, you can still get home on the other two spark plugs. Because it is dual carb, it has a little more power than the single carb. All that power is transmitted through this gearbox into this uh, propeller. Now this particular propeller is a warp drive propeller and it's a carbon fiber composite propeller. And this one has the taper tip option which makes it a little bit quieter supposedly. But the little airplane has a, a, a boom tail and it doesn't have the traditional wires like a Quicksilver MX or uh, what you would think of as a conventional ultralight um, and, and it's got uh, a few wires bracing the tail but it's a good little plane and I highly recommend it this one also has a, a trim tab back here on the elevator so that you can trim it for your flight condition it's got band brakes on the wheels so that you can stop it and hold it while you do your run-ups 
That door right there inside of here is where the ballistic parachute is. There's my PRS parachute and the rocket that fires it in case I was to ever have a problem where I needed to. It'll pop that open and deploy the parachute. Um, in, a, in a separate video, I'm going to kind of talk to you about uh, some of the reasons that two-stroke motors fail and cause engine outs and ultimately end up putting you on the ground and I want to go into some of these things so that uh, you can avoid them. There are some very simple things that you can do to avoid being uh, put down on the ground by a two-stroke engine. Um, you'll find that a lot of people really have a low opinion of two-stroke engines but I'll tell you this, I've had jet skis, sea doos motorcycles for years and years and years and two-stroke engines are perfectly fine as long as you maintain them and use them in the manner in which they're recommended and, and manufactured for. And so we'll talk about that in another video. But I wanted to give you an overview and just kind of show you what a Quicksilver GT400 is and what, uh, you know, what the features of the airplane are. One of the other features, real quick, is these struts. There's no flying wires. It's all strut braced. And so, you know, there's no wires or king posts on the top of the wing. And this little airplane weighs about 400 pounds, give or take, and it can carry a 250-pound fellow like me. So that's it for this installment, and I'll be back with some more videos in the future. Thanks.